In this video, we're going to look at how the composition of the liquid and vapor phases of a solution change as a function of temperature. Okay, so we have our two laws here governing the vapor pressures of our different components. We have that the total pressure is just a sum of the pressures of each individual component. That's from Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. And we have for ideal solutions that the vapor pressure of an individual component, PI, is just equal to the liquid mole fraction of that component times the vapor pressure of that pure liquid. And that is only true again for ideal solutions. So this allows us to write what the total pressure, uh, total vapor pressure of the system is going to be. So let's pretend we just have two components, component one and component two, for a binary solution, solution consisting of two components. That would be liquid mole fraction of component one times its pure liquid vapor pressure plus liquid mole fraction of component two times its pure vapor pressure. And for just two components, we know that for a binary mixture, we have chi two is just one minus chi one and vice versa, chi1 is just 1 minus chi2. So we can then substitute in our total pressure. It's going to be equal to chi1 p1 star plus 1 minus chi1 p2 star. And then we can factorize that equation into a nice convenient form for us, which is that that total pressure equals P2 star minus chi 1 L times P2 star minus P1 star. Okay, now we take all of those values there and we can solve for chi 1 in the liquid phase get ourselves a convenient equation. That's going to be that chi 1 in the liquid phase. It's going to be P2 star. This is just going to be an algebraic rearrangement of this, as this was of that. P2 star minus total pressure divided by P2 star minus P1 star. So this will be true for the liquid phase mole fraction for any binary ideal solution. Now what about the gas phase? What about the gas phase mole fraction? We want that value as well. Okay, so chi1 in the gas, in the vapor, is just going to be equal to the pressure of component 1 divided by the total pressure. We know that pressure for ideal gases is independent of what type of particles they are. So the mole fraction of a component in the gas is just its partial pressure divided by the total pressure. But we just saw that for ideal solutions, its partial pressure is going to be given by its liquid mole fraction times the liquid vapor pressure. So this means that we can substitute in here chi 1 L times P1 star divided by P total. So if, so we can get the what the liquid mole fraction is based off of the total pressure and the vapor pressure of the individual components. And then we can solve, given that liquid mole fraction, chi1 in the gas is going to be chi1 in the liquid times the vapor pressure of component one divided by the total vapor pressure. Okay, so the vapor pressure is just going to be a function which is, it's going to be a function of temperature. So the vapor pressure of each component is a function of temperature. And then the total pressure is just the sum of the individual vapor pressures. So really this is, each of these are gonna be functions which vary with temperature as these vapor pressures change this total pressure here. So we can plot what the result ends up being 
if you get these vapor pressures as a function of temperature. We can plot the composition of the gas phase in purple and the liquid phase in yellow there. And that'll give us a diagram which will tell us as a function of temperature what is the composition of each of these phases. So I'm also going to mark on this diagram that above this temperature we are exclusively gas and below both of these curves we are exclusively liquid and in between these curves you have an equilibrium between liquid and gas. Okay, so let's start for example here at a value which is rather high mole fraction 1 in the liquid and at that temperature any vapor which evaporates is going to be much lower much less concentrated in component 1 it's going to be much heavier in component 2 so the vapor has much more 2 in it than it does 1 now if we take that vapor here in this uh, purple line and we condense that back to a liquid when that evaporates as well it's going to become even further enriched in component 2 there's almost no component 1 left when that vapor comes off and then if we condense that vapor and evaporate it again we're almost pure component 2 so what this is the basis of is distillation so this is how um, fractional distillation works so this idea of these temperature composition diagrams is the basis of distillation where we have basically the following process go on. We have some liquid and then we can vaporize the liquid and then what you get is a gas and that gas has an enriched mole fraction of component 2 or whichever one has the lower uh, boiling point and then take that gas, condense it back to a liquid. Now that liquid is enriched with component 2 as well. When you vaporize that, it's even more enriched in component 2, and you repeat this process until you essentially get pure component 2. So we repeat that cycle until we get pure liquid 2. And we can see that here. We have the liquid. We vaporize it, it becomes enriched, we condense it, and then we vaporize it again, it becomes even further enriched, condense it, etc., until we reach pure component 2 here, or whichever one has the lower boiling point. And then the liquid which is left behind uh, in the original flask is basically pure component 1.